Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be the final match of the Losers match. Kind of a weird, redundant thing to say there. Of BSL Season 14, Hasu League, Round of 16, Group C, upper right corner. We have White starting as the Blue Protoss, bottom right corner. We have XTO starting as the White Terran. I'm wondering if XTO sniped the white color just to uh, do a little nose snub at White there. Tick him off a little bit, the mind games. This is going to be on Butter, and considering what we've seen thus far, so White being very successful with his Reaver drops. Really catching... I don't even know if I want to say he caught XTO off guard. It's just mechanically, he's just had a lot of strength with that. XTO, though, with some clever play, able to sneak that command center previous match. And now, considering this is Butter, I don't know who to favor. XTO... If I was XTO, I would almost want to open up an earlier Goliath preventatively to go ahead and deny you've seen it two games in a row white coming at you with that quick reaver play so i say shut it down maybe even go for this is butter go for more of a two factory play something like that i don't know one problem on this map for him is if he kind of goes I feel like if he just plays the standard thing wow going for a very early scv scout is this going to be I wonder if this is going to be an SCV scout or if this is going to be proxy. We do see a probe after gateway here. Maybe just wants to confirm what he's up against. But Butter is one of those maps where having map control is absolutely critical because taking a third tends to be away from your expansion. There's the entire left-hand side of the map, which becomes critical in later stages, and you really can't take those safely unless you can threaten your opponent or if you just have an overwhelming amount of troops. XTO wandering in, confirming the assimilator, confirming the gateway. No second pylon as of yet. Probe wandering in, confirming the refinery and the barracks alongside that supply depot. See if he opts for any form of harassment. We do see that cybernetic score before a second pylon. Pretty typical. And the SCV just gonna steal some minerals. I love seeing it. It's kind of weird, actually. It's got kind of a halo glow on butter. It's like the holy minerals for some reason. Is that with all? Is it just that SCV? Just this SCV. This is a blessed SCV, ladies and gentlemen, for whatever reason. Has just kind of that nice uh, glowing aura about him. Pylon block, uh, pylon placed inside the mineral line. Looked like that probe thinking about going for a manor pylon. Potentially. First Marine out. Looks like he's going to go ahead and skip the second Marine and go right into factory. And Probe got a kill. Nice play. Was able to persistently attack an SCV in the line. And he's going to escape with his life. So he's going... Well, technically life. Probes? Are they alive? They're like robotic. They got AI, right? Is it like Jarvis sort of level thing? I don't know. I feel like probes are sentient. They're too cute not to be sentient, right? That's a rule. So going to retreat the Marine furious that his brethren died and going to try to hunt this probe down but this probe looks like it is too wily and is going to escape into the wastelands as if you're going to go ahead and try to escape as well we are seeing range upgraded in earnest this time additional ream being produced xto going for the expansion fortunately for him white playing a little bit more defensively not sending that dragoon forward to get aggressive as of current though there is no bunker on the front, and I'm almost wondering once this is spotted that there's no bunker and the expansion's being placed if that Dragoon is going to... Nope, just going to hold back. White trying to blockade, not able to blockade, and able to wander in, confirm, two gate, and range. And I don't think this is going to be, I think, confirming that this isn't fake range either. Also confirming location of all three pylons. Bunker now in place, two Marines in there, a Vulture wandering its way out. Machine shop being placed. And White going ahead and plopping down that Nexus. A third probe, or sorry, that same probe, very bravely, going to march out towards the third. Is he just going to go for a quick double expansion? Very greedy play. This Vulture wandering out. Dragoon's not able to intercept it. This Dragoon, let's see if it can go ahead and plug that gap. The Vulture is going to be able to confirm that there's a Nexus in location. Probe uh, needs to be careful. So it looks like that Vulture going to lose its life mostly for scouting information. Dragoon starting to attack that barracks on the front. Should be a siege tank out in not too long. Let's see if this barracks gets lifted up. 
and pulled back. But currently white with this probe, I'm wondering if he is just going to skip Dragoons for a moment now that the two gate's been spotted and play from there. He does have a robotics facility being produced behind this. And all indications are, yes, he's just going to do a mineral pause and go at, or I, I should say a production pause. He is at uh, 33 out of 33 until this Nexus kind of a supply cap for him. But I'm wondering if this is an intentional supply cap to just go ahead and get that Nexus online. Probably not. Siege tank moving forward. Three SCVs are there to help defend us. He does need to babysit this tank carefully because it is possible with a bit of micro. He can press forward into this. Siege tech not there yet. Now that there's four Dragoons pressing in, able to get the siege tank picked off. Another Marine is produced. Decent amounts of damage on one of the Dragoons, but this is going to allow White to continue to harass this front. Might be able to get the bunker, at least forcing four SCVs off the line. Fifth SCV there just in case that Dragoon is able to continue to attack. And now, kind of a quandary, that barracks is burning. Another SCV pulling off the line, so White getting his money's worth here. More Dragoons pressing forward. Once these two additional Dragoons get here, might be a bunker bus situation. Siege check researching. One tank out. But XTO very slow to get this second tank on the front. And we have a third Nexus behind this. So things working out well for White. He's 10 supply head already. XTO still doing a good job macroing. SCV's exposed on this bunker. And this is one SCV down, which means they are doing... There's enough Dragoons that they're doing counter damage. They might be able to punch through this. Siege tech still a smidge off. And this is costing XDO, I think, both distractionary time. And this is a lot of lost mining time and having these SCVs pinned to the front. Two siege tanks now. Their siege check finally finished. More Dragoons there. But honestly, the Dragoons might just walk by and pick up those siege tanks. Eating a lot of Marine damage. Vulture getting picked off. One siege tank down. Second siege tank getting picked off. And White with Dragoons all over the natural expansion. Has lost several of them, but it looks like they're going to pop out the other side. SCV's trying to linebacker in and to take care of this. But that's additional siege tanks that have been wiped out. The Marines pulling out. And between the Marines and the SCVs, it looks like they are going to be able to finally take care of those Dragoons. But the siege tank count has been kept rather small mines and vulture speed being upgraded which is going to be critical to slow down white's economy as he does have that third base up plopping down two additional gateways sorry three additional gateways the observer going ahead and seeing the double machine shop roll and this is kind of that stage where i was talking about on butter if you can apply pressure to your opponent it puts you in a little bit more of an advantageous situation. And XTO, if he can get some vultures out really quick. Never mind. He went dropship behind this. How did I miss that? Maybe that is what delayed those siege tanks. So now moving up with the dropship. There's a Dragoon. So I think this might have been spotted by the Observer. It must have been spotted by the Observer. Because there's already a Dragoon in position. This Observer going to see it. Only one Dragoon to, to engage this dropship, however. And that is... A siege tank and two vultures. It looks like XTO realizing he was spotted. I don't know if he even realizes this third is up, though. Might have an opportunity. And this SCV from, that got the single kill from earlier. Still in position. But this is where the vultures could really shine. Because this, this cannon just now warping in upper left-hand corner. XTO might be able to flood this location. Unfortunately, he just is unaware that that third... Or maybe he's just concerned about troop placement. So right now, though, this dropship is pinning these Dragoons in White's base. And XTO doing it again. So this time, I think in a much more calculated manner, the Vulture sneaking through into the natural expansion, dropping some mines. Gonna sneak behind the probe line, get some probe kills. Nice value there. Also just doing some nice economic disruption. Let's see if now he meanders up to that third. But he's gonna go ahead and grab his third base at the 9 o'clock location, and with that drop, with all those Dragoons out of position, you're going to move up with that drop. So now the Dragoons are clearing mines here. It's like, okay, you're going to do that. I'm going to drop the Siege Shank now. And everything else in the main. Unfortunately, there's a cannon there to defend, Dragoons there to intercept. So not getting a lot out of this. 
aside from distraction. So loses the dropship, loses the siege tank, loses the vultures. Now a stream of dragoons making their way mid-map. Not a lot of siege tanks here to defend. The observer sweeping, looking for the typical third. It's not there. The vultures getting stymied and a few of them getting obliterated by these dragoons. And right now, it looks like there's going to be a repeat of game two, potentially. White not realizing there's a third base up. Potentially not realizing the lo location. Losing a Dragoon right there. To Mines, but he is currently ahead economically. Unfortunately for him, I think he's... Maybe not... Realizing the situation once again. This time we aren't seeing a five factory flood, nor are we seeing the... Grouping of machine shops. Mostly vultures being produced. Now the vultures sneaking up to this upper left hand corner. They are in a position where they can go ahead and pick off a couple probes, but see if they can have an opportunity to do so. White backing out from the front, the observer, seeing the siege tanks on the front line. White vultures able to get there, but not before the pylon blockade is here. Shuttle and some zealots going to try to counter this. Zealots not exactly the prime unit to go ahead and deal with vultures, but if XTO is not careful, though, he is going to lead these dragoons right to that 9 o'clock expansion. Right now, White not making any movements. And here's the thing, this Observer pinned here, if you saw a bunch of additional factories that might have been a tip-off, now that they're taken out, let's see if there's a bunch of factories dropped. White with a lot of troops. XTO just hoping this doesn't get scouted. But Siege Shanks and Vultures now moving out. Yeah, okay, this is a tense moment. So White moving across, does he peek in? He does not peek into the 9 o'clock. Doesn't peek into the 9 o'clock base. Now checking the 6 o'clock. Or at least keeping an eye. I think now he's thinking like, okay, I'm ahead. Because XTO is making his way to go ahead and grab that fort. Trying to encroach on this. Create some distraction. Decent mine coverage. The Zealots being wiped out. Before they're able to pull the mines into the siege tanks. But it looks like this is just a large enough attack force that White is going to be able to barrel through it. And despite being a victory here for White on the ground, it might play in to a disadvantageous situation overall where he thinks, okay, I'm up two bases to three and can hold in the situation when XTO, in fact, has three expansions. Engineering Bay getting wiped out in the air. Oof. Eats a mine right there. So White right now, up 30 supply. The question is for how long? Because he's actually down in workers. And that 9 o'clock base is decently saturated for XTO. We do see Gateway Man behind this. Already have that Stargate. Mine's now clearing. Oh, is he going to spot it? Probe making its way. It's going to go ahead and grab the upper left. Still hasn't peeked into the 9 o'clock to discover it. So the 9 o'clock base, the hero base... At this stage of things. More factories being placed from XTO in the background. He's still a little bit behind in supply. Working on plus one weapons. I don't know that we've had any forges. Okay, we do have double forge behind this. So upgrade lead with plus one weapons to white. Vulture is trying to press forward and find something. This base, if it is established and saturated, is going to give White the economic lead. But he might end up finding that lead as XTO has gone for a big factory flood to utilize his three bases worth of production to potentially roll right into White. First Arbiter in production. not going to be as powerful as the previous match because I don't think this pl the plus one weapons is going to be contested. White with kind of a skeleton crew moving forward. He's got to know something's up at this stage, especially looking at the fact that there's no additional... I mean, he hasn't peeked in to either location to confirm whether there's the third base or not. At anything across the three o'clock, looks like he's just now just peeking some zealots that way going to re-engage with Dragoons and Zealots. This is a lot of siege tanks. White still with the big supply lead. 
walking in, able to get some zealots on top of the siege tank to that left hand flank. More zealots marching forward, they might be able to crush the rest of this army. And so despite having three bases, despite having all those factories, XTO might get boxed back, but as I say that, the rest of White's Dragoons and Zealots getting cleaned up, he peeked down too far. And now, all of a sudden, XTO with the supply lead, a lot of factories reinforced behind this, and I don't know that White has much of a standing army. So if XTO wants to move and attack rather than grabbing his fourth, he can do so. And it looks like that is what he's opting to do. So again, White not discovering that latent base at that nine o'clock location. And we're looking at potentially a repeat of game two. XTO not gonna press the issue. It looks like he's just gonna go ahead and establish his fourth. Again, I have to feel like White's gotta, he has to know about this ninja expansion at this stage of things. Considering all the troops that are out there. Arbiter on the ground looks like plus one armor has finished. Plus two weapons not that far behind. That is before, that is, is as plus one weapons is finishing for XTO. Second armory in place. He's going to go for that plus one armor. Is, and I think XTO's plans from here is just like, okay, we're going to, this is a sacked base at this stage. The nine o'clock. Is this observer going to peek in? This base might last the entire time. Maybe this, this buried factory and this buried bunker being somewhat deceptive in the landscape. XTO moving forward, planting some mines. He does have that command center that was floated out safely. He's up in supply currently, but keep in mind down in upgrades overall. So those Dragoons do hit pretty hard, but he is pretty well entrenched here and has a very nice defensive line. Additional gateways being planted. We are seeing some high Templar take field. Sidestorm is being researched. second Arbiter on the way. We do have Stasis just now finishing as an upgrade. Also curious if we're going to see a potential recall. Right now the Arbiter just pocketed along that 3 o'clock ridge. Maybe, I mean, a good recall out of position right here. This is a lot of territory to try to cover. We do see that EMP being researched and that starport but that science vessel going to be able to move forward. It looks like science vessels already on patrol. Preparing for potential recalls. They're going to be... Actually, might even find that Arbiter if they scooch forward just a little bit. Zealots and High Templar streaming across. Dragoons taking up the high ground positioning. XTO merrily mining off. Well, it'll be three bases here because his main is basically mined out. So three bases versus technically three. White just about to grab his fourth. The Arbiter moving in. EMP's not there. I think Recall is researched. Turret's there to engage some mines along that ridge. More mines here, prepared. Recall right on top of the mines. Nice defense from XTO. And that is about as solid a splorching of a recall as you'll ever see. Dragoon blood sifting into the sands of butter. Maybe that's why they call it butter. Vultures peeling forward, siege tanks going up to engage them. White having to seed the high ground and White's turbant life now at risk. Honestly, after game one, I thought XTO was gonna have a lot of trouble with White, not even bothering to siege here. High Templar looking for some side storm. Is he even going to get the side storm off? No, I think he got EMP before he was able to drop anything. However, White looks like he, with without the siege, without the vulture support, and actually with superior troop count, White able to barrel into a lot of this. Reinforcements moving up. High Templar wiped out. No Arbiter here as well. Tank still remaining on siege. Level two weapons now kicking in. Keep in mind, this is level two weapons, level one armor for the Dragoons on the opposite side. Exio still refusing to siege. So the Dragoons might get better part of this engagement. Yeah, and it looks like they're gonna be able to clear this out as XTO not dropping siege at any part of this attack. Reinforcing wants this high ground. Some mines have been planted to go ahead and clear the rest of these Dragoons up. And with this fight, on top of all of this, White 
has delayed in grabbing an additional base. Arbiter moving forward, but no troops underneath. Now moving out with a slew of zealots, even in supply, actually shooting 10 ahead with some nice macro. Three base versus three base at this stage. White is going to have trouble in a minute, though, because XTO might go up a base in just a moment. Also, this is giving an opportunity for XTO to go ahead and mine up this high ground. And if you can just get some siege tanks here, he's going to be in solid position. White now grabbing that four o'clock. The Observer getting taken out. Oh, is this Observer? The Observer now finds the nine o'clock base. Got to be frustrated, but you can almost see the frustration that Observer's face upon spotting that. Looked angry on behalf of the entire Protoss race right there. So natural expansion looking thin. White does have a fourth base on the way. XTO with the supply lead. Continuing to roll at least the armor upgrade. Plus three weapons not there as of yet. More Arbiters taking the field. But right now, XTO, yeah, he has the high ground over that plateau. White's response is to just try to take a naked three o'clock base. So potentially, I guess, threaten the nine o'clock as a defense of the three. But right now it is completely, this is a very wide open gap to try to defend against Vultures or anything else. Arbiter pressing forward, Comsat being dropped to push those Dragoons back off the low ground. Goliath getting some damage on those Arbiters. The Siege Shank's not here yet. Zealots running up into the Vultures. They've been completely cleared out. Nice stasis on the back line of tanks. XTO still has the supply lead, but I don't see the rest of his army to engage the rest of this. Some mines wandering into the troops, but it looks like White now getting purchase over the plateau of the 9 o'clock location, which is going to be critical because, first of all, you can start wiping out some troops, push things back, maybe tech out that 9 o'clock, but also that's going to allow him to go ahead and establish that 3 o'clock base. So it's kind of bonus here. Threaten the 9 o'clock, maybe take out that 9 o'clock, maybe roll in threaten this bottom left and get the three o'clock as a bonus behind all of this. XTO though, still with a giant bank, still more troops is gonna be able to rescue these four siege tanks. And white now down 40 supply. So forget about the three o'clock location. He might end up losing his third. And this is, let's see if he can get the probes out of here. He's basically it. So he's at two mining bases, soon to be three if he can get that saturated. But this base looks like it is a loss. And White is starting to play whack-a-mole. Although he's moving in with a lot of Dragoons. That 3 o'clock base has now been comp added as well as the army encroaching. Reinforcement point is nearby for XTO. X now White, yeah, walking in. Was hoping to find a base, I think, exposed to start assaulting it while this was getting taken out. Just assumed that was the location of XTO's third, not realizing it was the 9 o'clock. Still down in supply. Might have an opportunity to get kind of a scalpel attack right here, but these Dragoons honestly look confused. The Siege Tank's just wandering up with those troops out of position to go ahead and wipe out the 11 o'clock base now. So the upper left... Oh, wow. Just a, There it is. Just a tap left. This is going to get wiped out, and all of a sudden, White is mining off his two new bases and nothing else. Pushing in between... Going to clear out some mines. Might be able to encroach at that 9 o'clock base. We do have this base in the bottom left-hand corner that is not yet mining. Some re some SCVs making their way this direction with some vultures in a few... Se well, actually, I take that back. A good amount of siege tanks. And now White's army might just get pincered in. Yeah, evacuating over the low ground. This Having this attack trooping here is at least getting him some time to continue mining. But even with his continuation mining, this is two base versus two base. XTO near 200 supply... Even upgrades overall. Siege Tank's getting caught unaware on the high ground. Nice stasis and some good side storm as well. So White making these troops count. However, this army is going to get reinforced. So it looks like it's going to be able to push back, take out some science vessels. And with a beautiful engagement from White with some great size storm. And as I say that, potentially overextending, he looked like he evened up the supply, but now he's running headlong into these siege tanks. He wants blood. But overextending and losing a lot. I mean, it was for a minute there, it looked like his troop count was even, and now he has dropped to 50 supply down. 
See if these High Templar can get out of dodge before they get EMP'd. Science Vessel on the case looks like he's going to be able to land a solid EMP on all of those troops. XTO with a huge bank able to resupply very rapidly. And White on the back ropes. For a second there, I thought he made his way back into it, but it does not look like it. XTO with a huge bank. Bases to spare. Might just, honestly, I would kind of ignore this attack force and just, yeah, wander in, work on that third. A lot of mines to clear, a single siege tank on defense right there. And White going to lose yet another base. Arbiter moving up, gets a great stasis on those clumped up siege tanks. And this might keep White in this match as tournament life at risk, he's near half the supply, though, of XTO. Dragoon's marching in to try to defend. Looks like he might be able to do it. He needs to get a move on before these tanks end up unstasis. Looks like he is going to be able to press in. However, this base has been basically emptied. He's down to 36 probes, which is not sufficient to keep a hungry, hungry Protoss army supplied and fed. White mining on, th or sorry, XTO mining on three bases. White down to two bases. Just resaturating this three o'clock base. And this is going to be a hard defense. Weapons, sorry, armor three on the way is, weapons three finished. Weapons three is now finished. Armor three is there for white. It looks like the vestiges of an army to try to defend that three o'clock location. Of the old hardened battle veterans just hoping against hope that this is going to be a victory somehow maybe if XTO overextends one direction or another he can get back into this but right now XTO with a monstrous supply lead 80 supply up science vessels to drop EMP I don't see it looks like there is an arbiter in the air not a lot of high templar the high templar are there or at least veterans it looks like or veteran, singular. Dragoon's pressing forward. Try to defend the high ground. I'm not sure what White can even accomplish here, honestly. The 9 o'clock base is just about mined out. So there's no victory to have. Maybe to get position. Getting dived on now by XTO. The Arbor being sent home. And the army just getting obliterated underneath. There's GG from White. And White is eliminated from BSL... Season 14 and a shocker, to be honest. XTO is going to move on to the final match here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I, I got to give it to XTO for this. Brilliant play, top to bottom. Thanks for listening.